NASA has finally completed its long-awaited Dream Chaser space plane, a reusable spacecraft designed to transport crew and cargo to low-Earth orbit destinations. This marks a significant milestone in the development of the spacecraft, which has been in the works for several years. With the Dream Chaser's completion, NASA is one step closer to achieving its goal of affordable and sustainable access to space. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the Dream Chaser and what it means for the future of space exploration. The canceled NASA space plane has been reborn as Dream Chaser. If you believe that reusable space planes are a thing of the past since Space Shuttle Atlantis landed after its STS-135, think again. The design and development of space planes are more prevalent today than ever, with a new era of space planes emerging soon. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, a compact yet powerful space plane, is poised to lead this renaissance. Get ready to witness the next exciting chapter in space exploration. It's worth noting that Dream Chaser is not just another creation of modern engineers and scientists who seek to revolutionize space travel. Its design is an amalgamation of as many as seven different vehicle designs, some thriving and breaking ground while others were not. The story of the HL-20 personnel launch system is one such design that has contributed significantly to the development of Dream Chaser. At first glance, the two space planes are almost indistinguishable with only a few notable differences, such as Dream Chaser's front landing skid and distinctive decal set. The similarities between the two space planes, from the blended lifting body airframe to the shape of the cockpit and their relatively small size, are striking. However, to understand the driving force behind the development of both spacecraft, it is necessary to consider the situation at NASA during the late 1980s. NASA's space shuttle program was the agency's top priority after the end of the Apollo program due to smaller annual budgets. The agency shifted towards uncrewed space probes to maintain any presence in deep space beyond low Earth orbit. The program, which envisioned a fleet of orbiters that could make trips into space as many as 100 times or more per orbiter, flew across a fleet of six orbiters for 135 missions. However, studies found that the average cost per launch of one space shuttle mission was $1.6 billion per flight, which could have been a more sustainable long-term cost figure. NASA and its associated aerospace contractors were looking for a smaller, less costly alternative to the space shuttle in the mid to late 1980s. At the same time, NASA began the blueprint phase for its second-generation National Orbital Space Station, then dubbed Space Station Freedom. The idea of a cost-effective, small vehicle capable of bringing astronauts and a small cargo up to low Earth orbit was tantalizing to a space agency perpetually at odds with accounting. NASA drew inspiration for their new spacecraft from prototype aircraft and spacecraft, especially specialized lifting body aircraft whose entire fuselage and undercarriage provide the bulk of the lift in flight for use in a miniature space plane program initially dubbed the Personnel Launch System or PLS program. The NASA Langley Research Center began work on the HL-20 prototype in Hampton, Virginia. A one-to-one -one scale mock-up of the HL-20 was constructed by engineering students from North Carolina A&T University and North Carolina State University in 1990. The HL-20 could fit comfortably inside the payload bay of a space shuttle orbiter, assuming the wingtips were retracted. Dream Chaser's dimensions are within inches of that of the HL-20. The HL-20 was designed for various missions, including space station rendezvous, low-Earth orbit satellite servicing, and deploying fleets of microsatellites from inside its payload compartment. The HL-20 could have been launched using a variety of medium-to-heavy lift booster rockets, such as the Delta II, Ariane 4, Atlas V, and even the Legacy Titan III series. As a result, the HL-20 could have filled the gaps if the space shuttle program was ever compromised. The HL-20 spacecraft project was never granted funding by NASA, despite attempts by private firms to make it feasible. However, its design became the inspiration for future space projects. In 2004, SpaceDev began developing the Dream Chaser project based on the HL-20 design. With help from Lockheed Martin, Aerojet, and the University of Colorado, SpaceDev modified the HL-20 design and created a capable set of space plane blueprints. Sierra Nevada Corporation bought out SpaceDev in 2008, and Sierra Space now controls Dream Chaser. 
The first test launch of Dream Chaser is scheduled for April 2024 aboard the Vulcan Centaur rocket from United Launch Alliance. First Dream Chaser vehicle ready for final testing. Sierra Space has just announced the completion of its first Dream Chaser spacecraft, Tenacity. And the exciting news? They plan to launch it on the International Space Station next spring. After over a decade of development, the Dream Chaser is finally here. Its main goal is transporting cargo, supplies, and experiments to and from the ISS. The spacecraft will launch on the powerful Vulcan Centaur rocket from Cape Canaveral and return to the Kennedy Space Center for a safe landing. But before this can happen, the Dream Chaser will be put through its paces at NASA's Neil A. Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio. That's where it will undergo environmental testing to ensure it's ready for its maiden voyage. It's amazing to witness our progress in space exploration and see the Dream Chaser taking shape. We can't wait to see it in action. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will undergo environmental testing in its thermal vacuum chamber at NASA's Armstrong facility. According to Ken Shields, Senior Director of Business Development of InSpace R&D, Manufacturing and Emerging Markets at Sierra Space, the testing should be completed by the end of the year, after which the spacecraft will be shipped to Cape Canaveral. While Sierra Space has not yet announced an exact target launch date for the first Dream Chaser mission, Shields has mentioned that it is currently planned for launch in March or April of 2024. The launch date will depend on the readiness of the Dream Chaser spacecraft and the Vulcan launch vehicle. This will be the second flight of Vulcan, following the inaugural launch of Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander in late December. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser was awarded a Commercial Resupply Services II contract in 2016 and is set to embark on a minimum of seven missions to the International Space Station. Dream Chaser comes in a cargo version, but Sierra Space has plans to develop a crewed version, which is a revival of the concept it had previously worked on for NASA's commercial crew program. In 2014, however, the agency had yet to select the company for development. Sierra Space may also work on a separate vehicle version for national security applications, but details remain undisclosed. Dream Chaser is one of Sierra Space's primary contributions to the Orbital Reef commercial space station concept developed with Blue Origin and other companies. Sierra Space has also developed inflatable habitation modules for the project. While reports of tension between the two companies have surfaced, Sierra Space and Blue Origin executives remain committed to working together on Orbital Reef. Despite Blue Origin shifting resources to other projects, both companies are determined to see the project through. Blue Origin has a heavy lift vehicle in New Glenn. We have a transportation system for crew and cargo with Dream Chaser. We're working together to build a space station, Janet Cavandi, President and Chief Science Officer of Sierra Space, said during a panel at AIAA's Ascend Conference. It's a very complimentary system. It works out really well, taking advantage of all those different capabilities. Return to Earth Dream Chaser will remain at the space station for about 45 days before it is uninstalled using Canada Arm 2. The spacecraft can land as quickly as 11 to 15 hours after departure, and there are daily opportunities if weather criteria are met. Landing weather criteria for the Dream Chaser generally require crosswinds at less than 17.2 miles per hour, or 15 knots, headwinds under 23 miles per hour, or 20 knots, and tailwinds below 11.5 miles an hour, or 10 knots. Thunderstorms, lightning, and rain within a 20-mile radius of the runway or 10 miles along the approach path are unacceptable landing conditions. Detailed flight rules will guide controllers in determining whether landing opportunities are favorable. A combination of Dream Chaser's 26 reaction control system thrusters will fire to commit the spacecraft to deorbit. Dream Chaser will re-enter Earth's atmosphere and glide to a runway landing at Kennedy's launch and landing facility in the style of NASA's space shuttle, becoming the first spacecraft to land at the facility since the final space shuttle flight in 2011. Once Dream Chaser is powered down after landing, the Sierra Space Ground Operations Team will transport it to the Space System Processing Facility to perform necessary inspections, offload remaining NASA cargo, and begin preparing it for the next mission. The completion of NASA's Dream Chaser spaceplane is a significant milestone in the field of space exploration. This advanced spacecraft will undoubtedly play a critical role in future missions, and its versatility and reusability make it a valuable asset for NASA and its partners. 
With the Dream Chaser, the possibilities for space exploration are endless, and we can expect to see incredible discoveries and advancements in the years to come. As we look forward to the future of space travel, we can all be excited about the possibilities that the Dream Chaser space plane brings to the table. We hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please be sure to share your thoughts down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for weekly space-related updates. See you next time!